Hey, this is Nate here, and what you currently see in the video is the Eclipse Light Engine demo, which is a game maker asset, and it's it's a high-end lighting solution that does PBR, normal map lighting, and emissives, and a bunch of other cool stuff for game maker. Um, this video is just going to talk a little about some of the features and the history behind the engine, and then primarily focus on the lights themselves. I'm going to go over how to configure them and and the the, the different options to go with them so originally I made the engine because there just there just wasn't any lighting out there uh, asset that could do what I needed it to do um, they were either too CPU bound or the shaders just weren't quite doing what I needed uh, so I came up with this one it follows the metallic roughness workflow with with PBR materials um, that said as you can see uh, these are just flat sprites so you can you can use primitive, primitive shapes or basic pixel art and stuff and still get lighting going on there so um, it is compatible with all platforms it, it, ha it contains some embedded shaders so if you're on a platform that just can't use the native ones um, according to the game maker implementation it'll use embedded shaders it'll default to those and those will work pretty much anywhere um, this is running on Windows right now, so it's using DirectX. And when it does run on native shaders, it, it can use multiple render targets, which means there's a lot of a lot of features that can be done faster and more efficiently the way it works. But and if Game Maker, if they ever uh, up, update that implementation, give us more options, perhaps the geometry shader, then the light engine, this light engine will get upgraded as well. So. Um, and, it, and there's a lot of neat little features here. It has spine. This is a spine animation. This robot, um, and it, you know you can see the light picks up. It looks really nice. We have emissive shaders here with this uh, lava, and the emissives also apply to. There's a particle system that these are emissive particles. They can be lit. They can be in shadow. They're they're configurable to whatever you need. Um, then the ambient lighting. I can crank that up some down there's ambient lighting um, and if I turn the ambient off there's an automatic day night cycle which if you look in the upper left you can see it's 5 a.m. it's starting to flow by um, and this this could be set up for moonlight daylight uh, different times of rising and setting and stuff there's a whole bunch of options you can configure so as you can see the has automatic day night cycle all you gotta do is drop an object in and, and you got it so and I can turn that off it, as far as performance goes, it's highly optimized. Um, it packs shadow maps all into like one single map really efficiently. The the big thing is the more pixels you're rendering, the more it's going to cost. There's there's no way around that. So if you're going to expert to something like Switch, Nintendo Switch, uh, you know your resolution, you're not going to be able to push 4K. It, the hardware just simply can't do it. Um, as optimized as this is, you just you know you're gonna have to bump it down. It does dynamic resolutions though, so as you can see, if I bump it all the way down, it's gonna look pretty terrible. Uh, let's look at this robot. Um, that's <laughs> really bad, but yeah, there's 640 by 360. There's 540p, 720. Uh, there's 1080p, and bump it up to there's 4K again. So. It, it'll do the full range of whatever you set it to. The the engine doesn't actually care what resolution you have set. It it goes by what you set and what the window and the surface has. So, but you can easily bump it down to accommodate older older hardware. Um, it, I have a Linux box that has a about a six year old GPU and it, it can run about a hundred lights at the same time, maybe more. Uh, I've ran it on a a Zen phone. That's the only phone I have and it runs just fine on Android. Uh, I don't have a an iPhone to test it on, but so it, it's multi-platform. It runs good considering the, considering the resolution. You, unlike most game maker games where you can just plop it onto a potato and it'll run, uh, it's, it's not like that. You, you definitely have to consider what you're trying to do and what what your hardware requirements are going to be. You're going to go from potato requirements like most game maker games to at least something uh, something modern. So. I would say the best target for this engine at the moment is also the most popular card, which is the GTX 1060. That's about, according to Steam surveys, that's like the latest, most popular card. So, which also means PlayStation, Xbox, those are going to be just fine. Uh, Switch is usually the the outlier as far as power goes, and you have to bump down the resolution. So, but that's the general 
gist of the engine and uh, summary. So here I have up in the engine the, the base light type. It's underscore underscore light. We use the double underscores to emphasize you know this is a abstract object or you know you, sh you shouldn't really be messing with this object. You should inherit from it and then edit it. So um, it has not too many properties, but you can do quite a bit with just these these settings here. And so you've got the Z value. It, the, like I said, the, the light is calculated in 3D. So the Z will affect how it hits those normal maps. And we've got intensity, fall off, radius, width, and arc. And I'll, I'll go into each of those when I have the GUI up. Where it's a lot easier to just see in real time as they're configured. So, and then those values, they can be changed anytime during during runtime. But they should be changed through these all these commands right here. And there'll be documentation on them. And the reason being is a lot of those uh, values are they're packed into a single float. That way, there's less uh, uniform sent off to the shader, and it's, it runs just faster, and it's a lot a lot more convenient. Plus, you're limited on you know you can't have a a million different floats uh, uniform floats sent up to a shader. There is a limit, and this this app helps greater greater that limit without uh, and it's still able to have lots and lots of lights. So if you have the hardware for it, you can have 200 lights, no problem. It, they'll fit in the uniforms by using this technique so and from that there's a bunch of prefab lights made um, we got a light an area light and a cone and a line light point light and a spotlight and we can look in the room too as you can see they're just set up by just dropping them in here you can drag it and that'll make the radius bigger uh, if you don't want a big light dragged like that you can also uh, you can just type it in. You could type it in right here if you wanted. Uh, any of them can be altered that way. But when you, when you shape them like that, you can kind of get a visual sense of what's going on. You know, if, if the room editor ever gets improved in Game Maker, that that'll definitely maybe something will come in handy there. So uh, I have it up in a project here still, so it'd be easier to just show. I'll configure some lights here. Um, get rid of the get rid of the overlay. So I have a GUI set up, so you can see intensity, this is just normalize 0 to 1. And if we, if we pop up the radius, as you can see, I, I have them capped at 2,000 here, but the radius can go up to whatever that max integer is. Um, so intensity is just literally the light strength. Fall off is an interesting one. So as you can see, here's hard fall off. Let me make it smaller. And then there's negative fall off. I use so when it sees the shader sees a negative value, it still has fall off, but it it's not um, it doesn't have that hard edge. With the hard edge, it's like that light's going to do nothing beyond that point. So when it's negative, you know it, it, it soft tapers out, goes on to infinity, and you can see when I turn up the intensity how the fall off is affected. So um, and the Z value. Depends, kind of depends on the texture. Actually, it looks better to show the Z if we put it next to something with a shadow. That'll work. Um, go to negative fall off. You will see the shadow changes because the light is essentially going up and down on the Z axis. So the, the lights actually and the shadows are all cast in, in 3D. Um, but they're they're at a fixed height, so it's it's not like you set multiple heights for the the uh, the shadow casters they're at a fixed height but it allows for you know it one thing I, a lot of light engines i found wouldn't do is when you move the light over the top of them they either don't cast shadow or it looks it's different <laughs> it messes you just don't want to do it so my solution was well i might as well just make them 3d and then they'll, they'll just look correct so i thought that was you know a great addition when i came up with that um so we got the width is when you want to do line light and then the angle whatever angle if you know if you don't have a width the angle is not going to matter the arc is your cone it'll go all the way up to that last degree and then cut off back to a, a full circle and if you combine them you know you can make an area light like you see down there the red one and looks pretty neat and then the color I'm colorblind but I'm gonna assume <laughs> There, that's blue. So they're they're pretty easy to configure. You can come up; they they mix correctly. 
they look pretty nice in this demo if you if you do download it and run it right click you can make more lights and right here this is a light and a particle uh, emitter and this is this is using the built-in game maker particles but it's running them through some shaders so that it, it takes emissives and uh, lit particles into consideration so uh, you can adjust whether you want this particle to show up in shadow or not I mean there's a light attached to it now so it, it's not gonna it's always gonna be in light but you can make it so some maybe there's particles on the ground you want them to be lit but not outdo the shadow so they'll they'll um, you can set them to the depth you want to be like dirt on the ground that gets pushed around or dust or something and depending on you know how you set up the particle system it'll do that and there's a prefab particle system that does it for you too so there's there's not a lot of extra coding that would need to even be done you just, it's just like setting up particles like you would in game maker so so anyway yeah it's got some nice particles there and then i can turn on the goo or the overlay again there and if we wait we'll see the day and night cycle i turned it back on and it's at 4 a.m right now if you look in the upper left there i have it set i think to like one minute per day and the there we go the day nights sun's coming by i think i have it it's outside the room like uh by a couple thousand pixels or something and there we go so automatic day and night cycle um you you could put two day and night cycles and have it go in reverse to make a moon if you wanted um the day and night cycle also comes with a color so maybe you want like a moon color a, a cooler nighttime color again i'm colorblind so i would i didn't attempt to make one <laughs> but and eventually it's it's gonna hit the um, when it should go fully black there you go and now now essentially the the sun's going back under the world and it's going to come back up the other side so the you can configure exactly what hours you want the sun to rise and set so if you want the sun to be completely blacked out until 5 a.m i think that's what i have it at 5 a.m and then it, it it should be at its full zenith of of intensity at 9 a.m not zenith like over the middle of the um the world but the actual it, it would be weird to see the sun slowly reaching its max throughout the day so it's a it's a i call it a rise and set window basically and it works the same for sun setting goes from 5 p.m to like 7 p.m or something like that so fully configurable you can rewind time set time slow down time wh whatever um it's very very flexible and, and then there's also bloom it looks actually if we look at the blue light that's really obvious so there's bloom off there's no bloom uh it's not like bloom back in 10 years ago when it came out with skyrim and looked horrible it's it's a it's a moderate amount of bloom it depends on how bright the light is too so if we take just a defaulted light here let's get it away from these other lights and look at the bloom so there's no bloom on just a very a mellow light there's a little bloom so and you can adjust how many blur passes the bloom does so and there's the ambient intensity uh there's i have i think they have the ambient right now set to kind of a blue color um and you can set the ambient color whatever you want but as you can see the ambient also gets a little bit of bloom there we go on off on off looks pretty good um and then let's see the render scale i think i already went over that but as you can see we can we can turn things way down and they can look like a pixelated mess or we can turn them way up with the bloom up and looks better with less ambience of course there we go so that's that's it in a nutshell oh and one one last feature too is it supports rotation uh, that was a big big reason I think that was one of the main reasons I did not want any other light engine was as soon as you rotated the camera it couldn't do anything it was completely out of sync so um, everything here has a matrix that translates everything that's going on so it's not a big deal it can do full rotation no problem and uh, there's if your game has like gravity that changes and the view shifts as gravity changes this will this will handle it no problem so anyway thanks for watching uh, hope you enjoy the asset